Look at my shadow. Oh, how's it coming from below me? What's happening with the lighting? That's weird. Maybe I'm a ghost. Hello humans, my name is Dale Kingsmill. I have a mythology video for you today. It actually is a new one. I haven't done this myth before. A lot of my recent myths have been revamps of old ones that I did years ago and that were lost to the sands of time. But this one is new and it starts with the story of Tantalus. Have I done Tantalus before? Actually, I don't know if I've done Tantalus before. I don't think I have. So Tantalus was like a super rich dude. He was, he was super duper preppy. And he was also real close buds with Zeus. Tantalus had free reign to go visit the gods on Olympus. He got to eat ambrosia and nectar. And then one day, Tantalus invites the Olympian gods to his place to have dinner. He's gonna make them food this time. For whatever reason, some stupid, like, private schoolboy prank, I guess, he decided that he was going to feed the gods. What? Oh! oh. His son got it in one. I don't know how so many people in Greek mythology are just like, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna kill my son and feed it to a person. What? So many different people independently came up with this idea. So anyway, he cuts up his son Pelops into itty bitty bits, chucks him in a stew, and, uh, and serves him to the Olympian gods when they show up for the dinner party. The Olympian gods are Olympian gods, so they know they're being fed person. <laughs> Man flesh. Everyone puts down their forks and spoons and they look at Tantalus, real unimpressed. Everyone except for Demeter. She's currently, she was a little bit uh, stressed out at the time. She just lost Persephone. So she was really distracted and she didn't notice and she did eat Pelops' shoulder. Ooh, a little bit of a taboo. So anyway, yada yada, Tantalus gets uh, punished in Tartarus forever. He's like tied up, he's he's standing in water and the water the water comes up and it laps just under his chin. But if he ever gets thirsty, if he, if he tries to drink it, because he's thirsty, the water level lowers. It lowers so he can't drink it. <gasps> so thirsty. I don't know how I feel about that choice I just made. And he also has some delicious fruit hanging above his head. Um, there's, there's right here, it's like it's right there, but every time it goes to eat it, ah, it goes, it's away, away from his mouth. He, he can never reach the food to eat when he's hungry and he can never reach the water to drink when he's thirsty. And then in some accounts there's, you know, a, a big boulder hanging above his head waiting to drop uh, because of a thing with a mountain and a golden dog. I think I have done that story. I, if I found it, I'll put it up here. So anyway, that's Tantalus. The gods feel bad for Pelops, who got all cut up and eaten a little a little bit eaten and so the gods collect all the pieces from the food and they put Pelops back together and they bring him back to life however because Demeter did eat his shoulder um, she she replaces it with a very fancy ivory prosthetic shoulder it's very fancy and lovely and nice in fact when he's brought back to life with his new uh, ivory shoulder he is so beautiful so mind-bogglingly handsome that Poseidon falls in love with him on the spot and the two of them live together for quite a little while Pelops lives up on Olympus with Poseidon the two of them have a grand romance I don't super know how it ends I saw one reference that um, that suggested Zeus may have kicked him off Olympus but one way or another their sizzling love affair does end um, but it seemingly on pretty amicable terms all right so meanwhile back on earth there's a guy, a king sort of a guy. His name is Onimaeus and he loves horses. He loves them so much. There's, he has a law that if anyone breeds a horse with a donkey in order to get a mule to do like farm work or pull carts or whatever, I don't know what mules do. If anyone ever breeds a horse with a donkey, it will be punishable by death. Cause how dare you desecrate how cool horses are. Onimaeus loved horses so much that he named two of his kids after horses, Hippodamus and Hippodamia. Hippo, Hippo means it, horse. Hippo, horse. Hippo, horse. This is not super duper important, but I just want you to know going forward that Onimaeus is, he's a horse girl. Now Onimaeus gets an oracle from Delphi one day telling him that he will be killed by his son-in-law. That doesn't sit too well with Onimaeus. Uh, he only has one daughter though, so he figures that if he can just keep her from getting married, he'll never have a son-in-law. He can never be killed by someone who doesn't exist, right? He sets up a bunch of rules to say that, yeah, oh, anyone can can win the hand of my daughter. They just have to beat me in a chariot race. This chariot race involves, uh, you know, Hippodamia 
getting in the chariot with her suitor, and they race off into the sunset, or well, into Corinth. And if they can outrun Onimaeus on his chariot, then they can get married and it'll be good for them. But if Onimaeus catches up to them, he will kill the suitor with his um, fancy, fancy spear that he got from his dad Ares. Funny thing about his dad Ares, um, Onimaeus had also been gifted by his divine pappy a team of golden horses faster than the northern wind, which is quite fast, um, and so he always won. He would always begin every race giving the suitors a head start while he slaughtered uh, a sheep to Zeus in, in sacrifice, and then he would chase after them, but his horses were so fast that no matter how, like, if they got half an hour head start, he would still catch up to them. And as if several gifts from Ares weren't enough of an advantage, he also had hired the best race car driver in all the land, a guy named Myrtilus. So every single thing was stacked in Onimaeus's favour. By the time Pelops has come back down to Earth, Onimaeus has killed a dozen different princes who've tried to win the hand of Hippodamia. Now Pelops has decided that, of course, he's going to marry Hippodamia. But Pelops isn't a complete fool. He's heard the stories. He knows he's going to need a little bit of divine help of his own. Lucky for him, he has an Olympian sugar daddy. So what does he do? He struts on down to the beach, slaughters a goat, calls up Poseidon. Hey sexy, how's it going? Things are going really well back on Earth. I'm getting married. Poseidon's very excited for his ex, and he asks if there's any kind of a wedding gift that Pelops would like. Funny you should mention it, I have to actually win this chariot race, but Onimaeus has these super fancy horses and a super good charioteer, not to mention this deadly spear that he's gonna kill me with if I lose the race. Poseidon's like, no, don't die, you're so sexy. <laughs> and Poseidon gives Pelops a winged chariot and a team of winged horses. I take it they were pretty fast too, because because when Pelops got in to give it a test drive with his own charioteer, he went giddy up and before he knew it he was just in Lesbos and the driver was dead because they'd moved too fast. The, the driver's now a ghost that haunts Lesbos, that's fun. So on Pelops goes by himself to win the Hand of Hippodamia. When he shows up, by the way, all the heads of the dozen princes have been, um, the, the princes have been decapitated and their heads have been hung up on the gate, um, which is I feel needlessly brutal and gruesome, but I guess Onimaeus wants to make an impression, and it does work. Still, he gathers his courage, and he walks in and he says, I'm here to marry Hippodamia. Onimaeus is like, great, we'll have the race tomorrow, you can stay here tonight. Meanwhile, Hippodamia and Pelops hit it off. They fall in love. It's been like an hour and they're in love, all right. They fall in love, and Hippodamia isn't sure that Pelops' Poseidon horses are going to be enough to win him this race, but she doesn't want him to die. So she comes up with a cunning plan. Turns out, Myrtilus, the, the opposing charioteer guy, he has a crush on Hippodamia, but he's just not willing to do anything about it because he knows that he would die. But Hippodamia decides to take advantage of it. So she goes to hang out with him and she starts flirting and she's like, hey, hey Myrtilus, hey, hey. This is how you flirt, right? Or wink. And with eyelashes a flutter, she she says, Hey, is there any way that you could, <laughs> I don't know, like, um, throw the race? Absolutely. He goes and he makes some wax replicas of the linchpins that are meant to go in the wheels for the chariot, right? And he replaces the real bronze linchpins with the wax ones. So next day, as the race is going on, Pelops takes a flying start. He doesn't have to stop and go around water because of his literal flying star that was a pun literal flying star he can fly over the water because of all the wings and Onimaeus is like "Ooh, better hurry up with this sacrifice kills his thing and he hops in and he goes go Metalos, go lo and behold the horses that Ares gifted Onimaeus are still faster they begin gaining on Pelops but just as they're catching up the heat from the wheels moving so quickly melts the wax and the wheels come off Metalos jumps out at the last minute knowing what's about to happen but Onimaeus stays in and the chariot smashes to bits and he gets tangled in the reins and he gets dragged by the horses and he dies. It's bad, it's not pretty. And while Onimaeus is being dragged off by the horses, he uh, he does that classic Greek thing and he curses Myrtilos' name and he says, I decree with my dying wish curse that uh, that you'll be killed by Pelops because you betrayed me for Pelops. He's gonna kill you. So Pelops and Hippodamia can get married now and the two of them and Myrtilos go for a wonderful drive in the sky in the flying chariot. 
I can show you the world. But Myrtilos tries to make a move on Hippodamia because he thought that they were gonna get together now. And now, while they're miles and miles above ground, Pelops kicks. I was kicking. I just realized that you can't see it. Probably wasn't worth it. I was getting into the story, you know. So he donkey kicks Myrtilus out of the back of the chariot and he's falling through the sky. And as he's falling, he has the time and presence of mind to, to get cross and to have a death wish of his own. Eh. I curse your family for all generations to come. Eh. Which will be a thing. I mean, it's, it's the Agamemnon family line, so, like, things are bad. Although, I have to say, I don't think that their family is any more cursed, really, than any other family line from Greek myth. Everyone in Greek myth gets murdered. I don't know if the murders in this particular family can necessarily be attributed to the death curse, is what I'm saying. I think they would have died in horrible ways anyway. And anyway, more evidence that the curse wasn't that potent. Pelops got to take over Onomaeus' kingdom, take down all those grisly heads, brighten up the decor a little bit, uh, take over the surrounding lands, found the Peloponnese. So I don't know, he kind of seems like he's doing fine. Anyway, that's the story. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, there's buttons, you know how the internet works. All of the things, all, all the things. Apart from that, I do believe that's it. I think that's it, I'm done. Email this to your grandma. I'll see you some other time. I made a choice to wear this jacket for the sake of fashion because I felt like I needed more layers, but also it's really hot today. Why did I do that? Oh, well, for the sake of fashion. Eh.